Today, let's clean up your low end frequencies with a high pass filter. EQ is one of the most powerful tools you can use in your narration. You really need to learn EQ so you can dial in the clarity and presence to get the best out of your performance. Reading your audiobook and having a great performance is number one, but you could be damaging the end result for your audiobook listeners if you don't nail down the EQ settings that work best for your voice. I feel EQ is so important that I only want to see you succeed. So I want to give you my narration EQ guide. It's a very simple guide that literally walks you through my process of dialing in the perfect vocal settings. And I want you to have this for free. So head to thehomeaudioproject.com slash EQ and sign up there if you don't already have it. Okay, the high pass frequency is one part of EQ that can really help clean up all of the nasty low end rumble in your performance and set the stage for clarity in your voice. So let's jump into a session and see my approach. All right, to start off, who should use a high pass filter? And the basic answer is everyone uh, because males and female voices all are going to have some type of low resident register. So there's kind of a rule of thumb that with males, you want to use a high pass filter to about 70 hertz to about 80 hertz. And that's just because you still want to leave some of that low end that makes up that male voice. It gives it that thickness that it needs, that authority that it needs. And with females, it's still about the same. It's around 70 to 90 hertz. Now, Every voice is different, so you may have to play with that. There are females out there that have lower registers. There are females out there that have higher registers. So you could get away with even 100 hertz. So what does a high-pass filter do? What a high-pass filter is, is that it's an EQ curve that removes unwanted low frequencies from a given source. So in this case, a narration or a voiceover. And they are awesome when you use them correctly because then you can clean up all of the woofiness or just the low end rumble that we don't want in a vocal performance. If you use them incorrectly, you can absolutely ruin your vocal. If you go too much, then you're going to thin out the vocal. So just to show you for demonstration here, let's turn it on. If you roll this all the way up to 200 hertz, you are going to have a completely thin voice. If you do too little, though, then you're still going to allow low frequencies to slip through that could muddy up your vocal. I was seven, and I had no front teeth, legs that rivaled a giraffe's. So obviously this is a completely exaggerated, but at just under 300 hertz, uh, it sounds bad, <laughs> right? It's, it's very tinny. It's very ear-piercing. Now, if you go too little... I was seven, and I had no front teeth, legs that rival... While this is a very clean recording, it's still going to allow some of those unwanted low frequencies to pass through. In narration or in voiceovers, it's going to allow the clarity to come through. So it cuts unwanted rumbles at the source, and the source being your voice. But it can help with other external noises as well, right? You're in a booth... If you're like a typical narrator, you're in a home studio where you have road noise or maybe your neighbor's doing something outside. Maybe your kids or your husband or your wife is doing upstairs. And while that being closer to you could not remove everything with a high pass filter, it can help clean it up. So it's going to allow for better gain staging and providing more control for your headroom and headroom being the available space between your loudest peak and zero, or in ACX terms, negative three. So how I use a high-pass filter is that I just dial it up. But I want to dial it up just enough to where I'm hearing everything that is muffled speech or woofiness. And then once I start hearing recognizable speech, I either dial it back or I know I'm within the range that I should be. 
So that could be the 70 to 80 hertz range, maybe 90, depending on, because again, this is a female recording. And then I stop there because I know that I'm going to clean it up in other areas of my EQ. So let's just give this a shot. Let's see where we're at. So I'm just going to put this on loop mode and we'll see what we get here. The Spencer women have never won beauty pageants. And I'm going to switch to EQ solo mode. And on Pro Tools, we just have to hit this little speaker here. And I'm going to dial all the way back down to 20 hertz. Okay, and we're not hearing anything. So now I'm going to start rolling up. Okay, so right there at 76 hertz, when I was going up to 90, to me, it started to feel like I was getting a little bit of that recognizable speech. So I wanted to dial it back just enough because I'm just cleaning up the low end. So now when I take off this solo mode and take a listen. My mom first said that to me when I was in the second grade. And my best friend won the mini princess contest at the New York State Fair. That sounds great. So I'm going to toggle this off real quick and take a listen. And I'll toggle it back on while it's playing just to see if we can hear a difference. My mom first said that to me when I was in the second grade. And my best friend won the mini princess contest at the New York State Fair. So not a big difference, just a very, very subtle difference. And that's what I'm looking for because I want to keep the narration as natural as possible, as if you're sitting right next to me and having a conversation. And granted, there's other things in this narration that we could clean up and we would address those with other EQ tools. But for this example, just showing what a high pass filter can do and how you can use it. This can be a method that can really clean up your vocal. So there you go, my friend. Although a small move, a high pass filter is an underestimated powerful tool. It really does set the stage for clarity you need in your narration. So if you don't have my narration EQ guide, this will help walk you through the other pieces of the EQ puzzle and clean up a lot of confusion for you if you're new to mastering audiobooks, just head to thehomeaudioproject.com slash EQ and make it free so you can just focus on your journey and grow to be a successful narrator. Now, I really hope that you have an amazing day and I'll see you in another video real soon.